I was feeling very kind of like, wow, I've took five or six steps backwards two weeks before the comp, like I said, a week before the comp. Doubting myself, thinking like, I'm going to end up coming like fifth, sixth place like I've done three years ago when I won Worlds. And people are saying in the comments, oh, it's not fair, Mitchell Hooper got longer. Like, guys, right? Hey, guys, so I'm back from the Royal Albert Hall. What a weekend it was. Very historic event. It's been on there for, I think, the last three years. And I was going down to this competition with no really any expectations. Obviously, as probably a lot of people heard, heard from, like, Giants Live and other people. No one that's won, when World Strawers Man that year has won this Royal Albert Hall, which is the first competition after World Strawers Man because, for obvious reasons, there's media, there's obligations, there's all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I don't really like making excuses, but the few weeks before, I was... Kind of just all over the place with training. I didn't really get a structure and um, I was traveling a lot. I was trying to go into the gym. I think my best axle press for this prep was 170 kilograms. I didn't really do much deadlifting. I was deadlifting maybe 360 for two or three raw with axle. Um, I didn't really do any stone work and I didn't do any um, cone and wheels work. They were like, and the wrecking ball hold, I never done it like that before. So I think I trained group twice. So all these events were just kind of like, if I can go in with a good mindset, my body not 100%, then I should do all right. Um, this competition, I didn't have anything to prove. I had won the biggest competition in Strongman a few a month or so ago. And um, I just wanted to go down here and kind of see where I was, see how much all the traveling and all the kind of media stuff has affected me and see if my mental side of the game was still strong. So first event was Max Axel Press. Obviously, massive shout out to Mitchell Hooper. I think uh, I knew Mitchell Hooper was going to hit a world record, I think. 95% of people think they did. So to be able to hit the 170 kilograms first lift very easy, and then the 185 I think it was, and then the 195, I was very, very happy with that. You know, my goal was to hit at least the 185 and maybe fail 195, so to hit 195 easy was good. I rushed the 205 enough. People are saying in the comments, oh, it's not fair, Mitchell Hooper got longer. Like, guys, right? I chose to go within having two minute rest because it didn't make any point. If I got it, it wouldn't have made any odds. If I didn't got it, it wouldn't have made any odds. So the reason I did it, I was just wanted to see if I could get it. I should have maybe had five minute rest and went up and attempted it and I would have probably got it because it was just my, one of my arms were off. But that was it, you know, 195 kilogram act. So I was very, very happy with. Make sure, you know, the rules are right. You, you allow two attempts. Um, as I did on the 205, I pressed it from the chest and put it back down on my chest and pressed it. It's as soon as it touches the ground, that's the attempt over. So he had two attempts. You're allowed to have 10 to 15 minute break when it gets less people. So it was in a row. He won fair and square. He got a world record. So just enjoy what he done because yeah, a world record at Royal Albert Hall, a world record on the axle is a very impressive feat. So massive shout out to him, but yeah. So yeah, going into the second event, deadlift. So we had back to back, back uh, basically, I think that fries your back, glutes, hamstrings. So the deadlift was a weird one for myself because I didn't really prep very well for this. Obviously, I have the strongest man on earth in a few weeks as well, and I was trying to balance both of them while I was traveling. I didn't use my deadlift suit at all for this prep because I was thinking, you know, when I put a suit on, I can deadlift for fun, but as soon as I take a suit off, I just lose all that raw power. So I think my best in the gym at 360 was was three reps, and I, I did that quite easily, so I stopped there, and then the... Then that was about three weeks before Royal Albert Hall. In the last two weeks, I had literally bottled it. I was hitting 310, 320 and really, really worried. But when I went down there, I was like, right, put a suit on. I know for it. I know that five would have got me good points and then six would have got me you know, really good points. And didn't have the suit on too tight, which was good. Did the five reps, had a wee rest and got the six rest. So I've never been able to have a rest in a suit and being able to reset myself and go again. So I was very happy with that. I had the suit on at the right tightness and to do six reps with not much prep for the deadlift, knows that my deadlift's in a good place as well. And I think I came third in that, only behind, obviously, Mitchell Hooper and Rags. So, yeah, I was very, very happy with that performance there. Another top three in that event and put me into good stead going into the most brutal event ever. Conan's wheel. This was just getting back, glutes, everything was just getting hammered by this point. Again, as well, I have to go about it that I've not, since World Shores Man's been on, I've not completed an event day in the gym. So... By the third event, my body was a bit more battered than I was, but I was mentally strong, which was, like I said, is very, very good. Um, so Conan's wheel for me, I had confidence off it from World Strongest Man. Obviously, Conan's and World Strongest Man was 250, 260. This Conan's wheel was like 200 kilograms, so I know it's like, 
it's more just all I just need to do is just squeeze it, walk with it, and it's fifty kilograms lighter, and it's not going to be as painful. So the good thing about it, I was you know I think it was a rotation and a half, in and I started going, oh no, I started slipping a wee bit, but I knew right, just keep the pace and keep going, and I think I ended up walking for another two and a quarter or something. So that got me really good point. I think it was third place overall, which again just proves that coding wheels working for me and it's a lot on the mindset than it is training with it because being a professional straw man if you you have to adapt you know and obviously I can't say no to all these opportunities I had I can't like go and not say yes to going to F1 just to train like it's stupid it it grows me as a person it grows my business and Luke's business and it also grows straw man and it's all positive for it the outcome's all positive for everyone so for me it was just that like I'm a professional straw man I've done the coding's wheel before all I need to do is execute it on the day you only have one shot to execute things. Doesn't matter if you execute it a hundred times in training or once in training. If you execute it on the day, whether your training's been a hundred percent or eighty percent, it doesn't matter. So that's what I did. I executed it perfectly on the day, and thankfully it was good enough for top three. So I was in a good position going into the wrecking ball hold, which I'd never ever ch touched before. Grips a, a, a bit of a weakness of mine. This wasn't really gripful. This was just about going through to a dark place and <laughs> mentally just squeezing and screaming. And obviously I picked it up thirty seconds. I was pretty shaky. I was dropping it, but then. I realised like all I needed to do was lean back, get it stuck in my quads and then just hold it and I think I ended up holding it for like 1 minute 13, 14 seconds so that was another like 40 odd seconds more when I was about to drop it so it was good you know I think I came up 6th place or something in that but the the times were tight I, and I had another at least 5, 10 seconds into me as well which was a good positive thing as well the difference in the past is like when it got hard to grip I would drop it but to think I was nearly going at 30 then to hold it till 1 minute 12, 13 seconds, it's, it just proves that like, you know, I'm still top two at this competition going in 80%. So anyway, the last event was <coughs> the Castle Water Atlas Stones. So this one for me was, I just said to Jermaine, I want a motion, one motion all five stones. You know, I said like, it would be a good confidence booster. Obviously, I'm training for very heavy stones at the shock, uh, strongest man on earth. Sorry, so the weights aren't an issue. But the thing I'd never, I hadn't done the whole prep from worlds to this was stone run. So any transitions. So that was the only thing I was worried about was how fast are my tr transitions going to be? Because transitions the thing that makes you win these out the stones as well. So and I, and also I was shocked at how many people got the the last two hundred kilogram stone, which is very good to see as well. So I think. 25 seconds was the time I had to beat um, before I I went out, which was Kane Francis or something. So that was a very fast time for him. So all I needed to do was I knew I'd like, get four stones and then the fifth one. My fifth one was a wee bit slow, but you know to one motion off five and still to have a slow stone run at 20 seconds, not training at them and that, and is a very good place to be. You know, a 20 second stone run, not training them, not doing any other kind of transition stuff and training and one motion in it it's yeah i'd very very happy with that that ended up me coming second place overall i result that uh massively shot me like two or three two weeks before the comp like i said a week before the comp i was in doubting myself thinking like i'm gonna end up coming like fifth sixth place like i've done three years ago when i won worlds and uh, people aren't gonna take me serious so it was nice to one be able to not be off a podium now since i lost my world strongest man title much more consistent in these comp giants live competitions arnold's everything now as well and it's good to see because podiums are just as good as wins. You know, if you can rank up podiums, it's good. So massive well done to Mitchell Hooper. Massive well done to Pablo as well. He was a fighter on that day. And uh, for myself, you know, I take a lot of confidence going into this. Before this competition, I was feeling very kind of like, wow, I've took five or six steps backwards. Sure, man and going to be hard, but it's going to be uh, very good now. I've kind of reset myself. I would say a massive shout out to... Uh, all my friends there, sponsors, everyone for, you know, hanging on with me as well. Like I said, you know, the last week or two, I've been hellish to work with because I've been going, I'm not completed any gym sessions. Tom can even say that behind the camera. We've been going into the gym all intentional training. I just can't. So he sees really helped me as well. Dan as well. Another one that's loads of patience with me. Nathan, nutritious, loads of patience with me. But the newest part of my g team, you know, a massive shout is uh, Charlie, who's my sports psychologist, who was actually at Royal Albert Hall watching me. Yeah, you know, it was nice to actually him to see what his work has done to me like and that's what I said you know I was talking to him the week before the competition saying I'm going into this competition to have fun but my fun doesn't mean I'm going to be mucking around I'm going in with a mindset that you know if I don't win I'll podium and that's was the right thing for me to say my mindset was 100% I was so focused you know if your mind's 100% you, you can push to your limits and that's what I did so yeah a big massive thank you to Charlie a massive part of the team and now we're on to like I said, Strongest Man on Earth, which is going to see the return of again, Half-Four, Beyonce, 
Mitchell Hooper, Bobby Thompson, myself, Novikov, all the big guys. So it's going to be a, a very, very heavy battle, hard battle, spicy battle. But then that's why we recap, guys. If you've not watched it, go watch it on official Strawman and go and uh, relive the Royal Albert Hall moment. It was such a historic event. And if you can't, if you can come to an, a Giants Live event, go get some tickets because uh, Glasgow is going to be absolutely spicy. Cheers for watching, guys. Thank you for the support. Smile, stay safe, stay spicy. Please ring that little bell. Ding, ding, ring, ding, ding, ding.